What's up guys, me Alan, and I'm back with another video, and today, actually I filmed this last night, but I decided I wanted to refilm it, um, so, I tweeted this out, I was making a special little video, uh, this is gonna be an NFL YouTuber rankings video, so similar to the, uh, NBA and motorsports ones that I've done, where it's not a definitive ranking, per se, it's more so, like, I enjoy watching these guys' content, and, if you were wanted to make a definitive ranking video, you could argue some of these guys above somebody else. But I just wanted to talk about these guys and things like that. Um, I'll have their Twitters and YouTube channels linked in the description below, obviously. Um, and then I got a little bit of a message at the end. Uh, so stick around to the end of the video for that. Um, I think once I get to the end of the list, it'll segue into that. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So drop a like, subscribe, and yeah. So starting off at number 10, there's 10 guys here. Um, and like with the other videos, it's people that I watch on a daily or near daily basis um, that make up this list. And there's not a ton of NFL YouTubers that I watch, uh, shockingly. But starting off at number 10 is Bengal. And he's kind of an outlier on this list because he's more of a Madden YouTuber. Uh, then, like, you know, but, you know, still fits within the NFL content realm. Um, a lot of good work. He's done some redrafts. Uh, he's done some, you know, rebuilds and things like that. And, uh, pretty good, pretty good stuff there. Um, number nine, Karsten the Oracle, aka KTO. Um, the, the thing with him is Ben, he's got great content, but consistency is a little bit of an issue. But that said, um, I'm not going to knock him on it because, one, his Browns just went, you know, the division round of the playoffs, something they haven't done in years. And two, because, you know, life happens and there's other stuff going on. He does have a podcast with another NFL YouTuber who we'll talk about in a little bit um, called Sports Therapy. I'll link that in the description as well. And... Um, yeah, so KTO at number two, or nine, sorry, the early vids, morning. Um, number eight is five points vids, and <laughs> he's, uh, he's a character. He's pretty hilarious at times. Um, the voice is what makes it worth it, but, um, pretty cool dude. Uh, you know, obviously does the dumpster fire streams with another, with several of these YouTubers. In fact, all... All but one of these guys on this list has been on the dumpster fire uh, with five points and urinating tree, who he does it with. Um, Bengals the only one that I don't think has been on it yet. Um, but that, but besides that, um, in terms of five points, his NFL content because he does do content on on other things as well. Um, he's got an interesting take and an interesting spin on things, um, like a lot of these guys do. It's unique. And, um, it's fun to watch, and I enjoy watching it. Uh, number seven is That's Good Sports, a.k.a. Brandon Perna. And, <laughs> he's another one that's pretty funny when it comes to his content. No, and not just with his content, but with the way he presents, uh, the, you know, the people that sponsor his videos and stuff like that. Um, he obviously had a kid last year, uh, which is huge for his life, so it, but he's still going along with, uh, with all the YouTube stuff. Uh, he's a big time Broncos fan, and um, yeah. Also, pretty interesting. You know, he has like a like a Lego Tom Brady thing, uh, or whatever, which is actually pretty cool. I, I wish I had one of those, but either way, uh, some good shit there. And uh, number six, we've got. Cameron Scooter Magruder, aka Mr. Do You Want to Talk About It? <laughs> um, when it comes to his NFL content, and it's not just the stuff that he's done about the Dallas Cowboys. Um, he, you know, he's worked with them, you know, a little bit here and there, of course. But uh, when it comes to presenting, you know, his reactions or his fans' reactions um, to the games, whether it was during, whether it's during the game or uh, after the game, depending on you know, how he does the reactions, um, it's always fun to watch, uh, just, <laughs> it's a whole lot of fun, 
you know, he's done NFL free agency reactions, NFL draft reactions, um, for, you know, for all the teams and stuff, um, put together in short videos, awesome stuff there. Um, I love the cameo that your name tree did at the end of the, uh, Cowboys Steelers reaction. That one was cool. Um, so some good shit there. And, uh, yeah. So now we get into the top five and you can argue if you, again, if this was a definitive rankings video, you could argue any one of these five guys to be at number one. Uh, but at number five, I have the other half of the sports therapy podcast with KTO and that is Flemlo Raps. And this guy, first of all, that voice is golden. But second of all, what his content consists of, and the cool and the cool thing about it is that his content was built on um was built on the old NFC NCAA football games, you know, playing those and you know making videos out of it. Uh, but you've, you know, as we've seen, you know, he's grown his channel a lot over the last several years. And now a lot of it consists of doing deep dives into the history of players and, um, you know, taking a look at how they got to where they are, uh, what happened to their NFL careers and where they're at now, um, as well as, you know, some more current stuff. And, um, you know, for him, I feel bad because his Bengals haven't been doing so well. But hopefully they turn it around. Hopefully Joe Burrow comes back and, you know, and plays well after the injury he suffered this year. Get a fucking O-line Cincinnati. Seriously. Uh, but, yeah, awesome stuff there. Again, he does the podcast with KTO. Um, some great shit there. And always fun to watch. At number four, I have Flight Mike with his second channel, uh, Microphone. Now, he's got two different channels he's, be, he's been grinding on. One is Flight Mike, which is the NBA channel that he has, and Microphone, which is his NFL channel. By the way, both have some banger intros, but if I had to pick one over the other, I'd be picking the Microphone intro, because that's a banger. It really is. Um, but the way he presents his content and the way he presents different things... Um, it's definitely, it's worth watching, and, um, <laughs> what's funny is that, like, you know, yesterday we had the, the Rams-Lions trade, the Stafford Goff trade, well, earlier in the day, he had made a video with a thumbnail, you know, talking about the Rams possibly wanting to trade Jerry Goff, and in the thumbnail, he had Matthew Stafford photoshopped into a, uh, or whatever, into a Rams jersey, <laughs> And then the trade happens later that day. Like, dude, you practically called it. Like, <laughs> that's some good shit right there. Um, that's not really. That's really not the first time that's happened. So, um, great stuff to check out. I'll link both of his channels. Um, he's a great dude, and you know, just awesome to talk to. Number three, and I'll argue that if you were to, again, if this was a definitive ranking video. You could argue the top three could be in any order possible. I mean, you could say it's 1A, 1B, 1C. Pretty much. But at number three, I have Tom Grassi. And a lot of the stuff I'm going to say here is stuff that I mentioned in the letter I wrote to him ahead of Christmas this past year. He has a P.O. box, which he puts in the description of his videos. So if you ever want to send him something, go check that out. Uh, but Grassi, he's one of those guys where it's like, once you find his channel and you start watching his content, you're like, how did I not find this sooner? Because it's just, wow. <clears throat> he obviously has a, the podcast, which is, you know, a podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. <laughs> his intros with the whole Grassi Posse thing and all that just... Wow, it's just it's just amazing, um, and his weekly reactions about the AFC and NFC East from this past season, those were just comedic genius, and not and not even just that, but it's like the way that it evolved over time, um, you know, with the two divisions and you know sort of interacting, and then what 
became of the ending of it. That was that was award winning shit right there. Seriously, it was. Um, so if you haven't seen any of that, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Um, you can watch them all individually, or you can check out his, the super cut that he made of it. It's kind of like with Yearning Tree when he you know put all the Days of Our Steelers vids together for what as one whole thing. Uh, well, Tom Grossi did the same thing with the NFC and AFC East Week reactions. Um, so, go check that out. Go check out his channel. Um, number two, and this is another guy I wish I found sooner. Uh, but this guy, he is the epitome of an NFL diehard. And um, it's Brett Coleman. Now... I heard about this guy when he was on the dumpster fire this past NFL season. Well, the season's not over yet, but you get my point. And the coolest thing about him is that he used to work at NFL Network. Not just for like a little while. Like he worked there for like a few years, um, which is freaking insane. And I remember, if I remember correctly, he told his story on the dumpster fire stream. It was like, like he was putting out YouTube content every now and again. And what he didn't realize was that the amount of, you know, the content he was putting out there was gaining a lot of viewership and stuff. And so, you know, eventually he sort of made the move, you know, and decided to do YouTube full time and move, you know, and leave NFL Network, which, you know, which, again, the fact that he's worked there, the fact that he's been there, that's just fucking legendary. I mean, I didn't mention this, but Grassi, he's been featured on uh monday night football twice and he also uh, he, there's a clip of him saying something about uh the washington football team that the team included in their uh playoff hype video ahead of their matchup against the buccaneers back in the wild card round <laughs> which is, which i saw that on twitter that was, that was pretty cool uh but in terms of brett coleman the things that he does are fucking legendary you know he takes a he takes a look at you know the players, you know, plays, you know, he's talking about the different plays that teams will use and run and all of that. You know, he shows it on screen. You know, he makes a, you know, most of his videos, you see him make some sort of drink beforehand, uh, before he gets started with the content. It's just, it's some amazing shit. And if you've not seen it, trust me, you want to go check him out and go subscribe because that is some awesome fucking shit. That all being said, we're now up to the top spot, and this is a guy that's got one hell of a story when it comes to YouTube. He's a shitposting yinzer, you got to see him wear jorts on the dumpster fire stream, you got to see his team go 11-0, then lose three straight, 4-5 to end the season, and then get their asses kicked against the Browns. The score does not tell the whole story of that wildcard game because a lot of that scoring that the Steelers did was in garbage time, which was most of the game. You already know who I'm talking about. It's Urinating Tree. And I was re-watching his like, State of the Tree vids, which is basically his uh, yearly reactions or, you know, that sort of thing last night. And the thing that he said in the last two that he's done... 2019 and uh, this past year is that with the way YouTube is nowadays, um, he's not totally sure how much longer he'll be on YouTube making content and all that, but he said he's going to keep going as long as he can and all that, which is awesome. And you have to look back at his history, really, because he, he was at one point a video game YouTuber where his channel was just not going anywhere, and it was dead for years. And then the 2016 election comes around, and he makes a video about the whole the mainstream media and things like that. Um, and that video popped off. And then he sort of and then he looked for sports content, and then he made the 0 and 16 Cleveland Browns video, which, by the way, is over two million views now. Yeah, that video popped off, and 
ever since, he's just been making tons and tons of sports content. You know, NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB. He's looked at college basketball. He's looked at, you know, the World Cup. He's looked at golf with the with the John Vandeveld story. Uh, he's done a little bit with NASCAR. He's, he's made a low-cal video on ESPN. He's done so much. And you can't help but applaud this man for what he's been able to do and for how he's grown his channel, how his channel has improved um, over the years. He's over, he has over 400,000 subscribers, um, which is something that to his, to this day still boggles his mind. I mean, you watch him on videos, you watch him on streams, especially on streams. Um, I go back to when he streamed the, the Steward Browns game or his reaction to it. He was up for several hours after the game was over reading all the super chats that he missed because he got backed up on them because of how the game was going. I mean, I, I don't know how much money he made off of super chats on that stream alone, which was over six hours long, you know, before YouTube takes its cut. But, and I mentioned this in the video, I in the open letter video I did um, about your entry. Uh, couple weeks back, uh, which he actually replied to, which is really cool. Um, you know, I mentioned that how the fans just, you know, when it, you know, he has such a, a huge amount of support when it comes to the fans, um, you know, which it's, it's mind boggling to him. And believe me, you know, on a much smaller scale, it's mind boggling to me to have almost 340 subscribers and over 1,800 Twitter followers, like, holy shit. But, um, in terms of urinating tree and the content, if you haven't checked it out by now, you got to. And, and the funniest thing is, is that the way I discovered him was when another YouTuber, uh, Lavish Luca, did a reaction to his legacy of failure vid on the Seattle Mariners, which was fucking hilarious. And then I started watching your tree's content. And I'm like, holy shit, this guy's awesome, and I've been watching ever since. Uh, I've just been in, and I've just been indulging in so much of his content that it's like I can watch and rewatch his shit multiple times in a single week, and it never gets stale, ever. Um, this amazing content creator, and he deserves all the love and support in the world. All, all these guys do; they really do. Which now segues into uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about. And it has a lot to do with these YouTubers and with a lot of other YouTubers as well, you know, that I've talked about in the past. Being a, a kid from a small town in New Hampshire who deals with ADHD and Asperger's, who never really had friends growing up, going through school, and being a huge sports fan that I am, sports YouTube has really help me out with the ambitions that I have. I want to be a sports journalist, maybe one day get to NFL Network or something like that, like Brett did. But either way, I want to be able to do things in life revolving around sports. I'm not the best when it comes to playing sports. Quite frankly, I don't have the body for it, but I give it my best shot all the time, whenever I get to. And... I just, I just love talking about sports. I really do. You know, this channel didn't have much of a direction when I, you know, when I uploaded it early on. And then, of course, eventually, you know, original Big Bri got me inspired to do diecast reviews. And now I've been doing, you know, my own point standings with die, uh, diecast buffets, um, uh, die, Dirt Last Cut series. Steve Dangle, you know, NHL YouTuber, uh, he... Inspired me to do my own trade trees with uh, the NFL, uh, which one day when I have the editing stuff to work with, I will make much better versions of those videos. Um, try, you know, you can bet on that. But all in all, 
it sports YouTube that has it has opened my eyes to a lot of things. The way that these guys present their content, the stuff that these guys talk about, you know, it's it's amazing. It really is. When it, whether it's about the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, whatever. There are some amazing people out there in the YouTube community when it comes to sports. And I cannot thank you all enough for everything that you guys do. You may not realize it. Um, you know, you may see me tag you guys on Twitter a lot with various videos that I make. Hoping that you guys watch. But from the bottom of my heart, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are the ones that really, really continue to help me light my fire when it comes to sports content and when it comes to sports in general. Um, I'll always love sports, but the passion that I have for it, it really feels like it came out of nowhere in my life. And the content that you guys make just keeps adding to it. It keeps adding to that passion. And I can't thank you guys enough for it because it means just, it just means that much to me. And so to all of you, to all these guys I talked about in this video, all these guys I talked about in the NBA video, all these guys I talked about in the motorsports video, well, most of them, um, thank you all so much for everything that you do, for all the content that you make, and I cannot wait to continue to indulge in said content in the future, and yeah. So keep up the good work, and can't wait to see what you guys come out with in the future. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, please drop a like, subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.